Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can get your Romans painted up that come in Warlord Games Gallic Starter War sets or the old Invasion of Britain set. These are obviously EIR legionaries so they came from that earlier set, but I'll demonstrate the technique on one of the Republican legionaries as well. And the technique can also be used to get your troops painted from other historical periods too. For example, Here's some Saxons I've done in a similar fashion. These are the heavy thanes with their chainmail halberds. And then more lightly armed churls or Saxon feared. And also on through to the horse and musket period. Here we have some Malvarian British infantry. and some Anglo-Zulu War British troops as well. The same technique being used to paint all of them. Now I'll agree, it's not going to win you any Golden Demon painting awards, but it's going to get your historical troops painted up quickly and based and on the table so you can enjoy using them in your games. And the main thing with this kind of troop type is you're going for mass effect, so good use of things like the decals and basing materials will solidify the look of the whole model and the unit as it is depicted on the tabletop. So let's get on with it. In our last video, we got this guy prepared and primed. And we can do the same with the Imperial Roman Legionary here. We're going to convert this guy, simply enough, with Again, the Wraithbone Primer or a mix of a, a light cream colour, which is any kind of uh, creamy white kind of mixture you want to use. And eventually we'll get him to look something like that. And then once we've got a unit of these, we can get them based. So from here, what I like to do is to start with the armour first. Now this guy is covered in a chainmail halberd. He's also wearing a helmet. Uh, and also has other metal areas such as the peel and tip uh, and areas of the scabbard and belt and such like. For silvery colours, silver colours um, generally best go on a black background. So I'm going to prime uh, the silver areas with black Templar as it's a nice thin uh, paint, goes on easily and won't clog too much of the detail. So we'll start getting that on the silver areas now. So give our Black Templar a bit of a shake. Pop it to the bench. And we're going to use Rosemary & Co size 1 brush. So I said, we're going to work on all these chainmail areas and the Pelum top. Now this particular legionary is the earlier period from Caesar's Wars and they had a brassy goldy coloured helmet. The gold colours tend to go best on a brown background so I'll brown that off later but we'll get the black done first on the chainmail. I'm just going to rub that in to the chainmail area and give it a spread around. As said, the nice thing about this is it's already thin because it's like a glaze almost, doesn't clog the detail and is easy to apply. And I'll come back when that's all done. So that's now the blackened areas done on the Republican Roman Legionary and also our Imperial Roman Legionary. I'll now paint the areas that are going to be a goldy colour with Saigo Brown. Again, this is a contrast paint and is a thin consistency and is great for just giving a layer of base colour to the gold area. Still using our Rosemary & Co number one brush. And we're just going to paint the helmet and the other golden accoutrements. The 
this brown colour base. And I'll come back to you when that's all done. So that's the golden areas pre-coloured with a dark brown with Saigo Brown, the helmet and parts of the swords, um, hilt, pommel and scabbard areas. And likewise on our Imperial Roman Legionary the same idea, not the helmet because that's going to be the same colour as the armour, but again the sword and the dagger have those golden areas pre-based with the Saigo Brown. So now we're going to paint those black areas with our silver armour colour, which I'm going to use good old lead belcher for. So I've got an old bit of um, plastic backing from a blister pack. I'm just going to use that as a simple palette. Just blue tag it to my bench. Get some of my lead belcher. Just grab an old brush to grab some out of the pot. Add a little bit of water to it, give it a mix. And I'm just going to cover all those black areas with the now thin lead belcher. And I'll come back when that's done. So that's the silvered areas now done on our Republican Legionary and our Imperial Legionary. And now we're going to do the gold areas. And to do that, we're going to give it a base colour of retributed armour. Again, this is a thick base colour. I'm going to put a little bit on my palette and thin it with a little bit of water. So that's our golden area is now done as well, the helmet and the various detailing on the sword and dagger. And likewise on our Imperial Roman Legionary, the same detailing on the sword and dagger and on his little, I don't know what you call it actually, his little belt of golden beads or whatever they are down the front. I guess it's some kind of armour protection to the groin area, uh, but uh, is depicted that way. So the thing to do now with these guys is to give them their shade wash. For the black area, sorry, for the black area. For the silver areas, I'm going to use Nuln Oil. And for the gold areas, I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia. I'm not going to do that right now because metallic colors can take a little while to dry fully. So what I would typically do is I'd actually be working on these in batches. Obviously working towards our unit size of 24. By the time you've worked through 24 models doing all the lead gold, all the lead gold, all the lead belcher and all the gold, by the time you get back to the first one, it's dry and ready for the wash. In the meantime, we can do their shields. Here I've also based the shields, so the square scutums for the Imperial Romans. I've given a black base coat to the metal areas and the rounded scutum for the Republican Legionary I've given a cyber brown base coat for what I'm going to do as a gold rim and central boss area. Here I've done the metalwork on the Imperial and Republican shields. Obviously one is in lead belcher and one is in retributor gold. They're not tidy this case, we're going to tidy them up later on. I'm going to let these dry and do the null oil and sepia washes as described earlier. Now that the metal areas have dried, we can now give them a shade wash. So for the silver area, I'm going to give that a shade wash of Null Oil. Still using our number one brush, and I've blue tacked my pot to the bench so I don't knock it over. Oh, 
and just work your way around the model, covering all the silver areas. And we'll come back when we're done. With the null oil now dry, we can apply the Seraphim Sepia Shade Wash to the gold areas. And again, I'll come back when this is all done. So now you can see both of those shade washes have dried, the Nuln Oil and the Seraphim Sepia. And we're now going to dry brush these areas, both areas at the same time, with a lighter silver colour. In this case I'm using Games Workshop's Runefang Silver. And we're going to do the same on the shields, which also have similarly had their shade washes and dried. The round scutum for the Republican soldier and the square ones for the um, Imperial soldiers. And I'm going to be using a small dry brush, extra small dry brush should I say, from Rosemary & Co. Nice fine tip. Great for dry brushing these small areas that we want to get done. To do the dry brushing I'm going to get a little bit of paint on the bristles, scrape off the excess, and then scrape more of the excess off on a piece of tissue. I'm going to test it on my finger just to see what it's doing, and then we're going to apply it to the model. And we're just going to rub it all around the areas, this, the gold as well, to bring those areas up again. It doesn't take long at all to work your way around. Don't forget the peel up. And oh, that's nicely done. And we'll do the same with the Imperial guy. I'll just get a little bit more paint on the brush. Same again, wipe off the excess. Get rid of the excess on the tissue. And we'll bring this down on this chap here. Ideally with dry brushing, you want to sort of like bring your brush down from the supposed light source above so that the bristles catch the raised areas that the light would fall on and therefore you get a highlight in the, the more sensible place. It's not such an issue with a chap wearing the, the um, chain mail of the Republican soldier, but with this guy with these quite clear plates, it does give a better effect that way. And again, don't forget the gold. gold one so it's not too silver. Just give this a nice fluffing around. And we'll work our way through the rest of the shields but I won't bore you with that. I'll come back to that when it's all done. 
So with the dry brushing complete on our two legionaries now, the next step is basically just, just to tidy them up now. We're going to be switching over to using contrast paints properly now, and that's going to be painted over the yellow areas. So anywhere where we've got some um, splatter from the shade wash or some over uh, brush from the dry brushing process, I'm just going to mix up a little bit of uh, a cream colour. You could use Wraithbone. Um, I've, I'm actually out of Wraithbone in my little stash here, so I'm going to mix up some Screaming Skull with a little bit of Vallejo White, and that'll give us a similar colour. And obviously the same on the shields, we can tidy these up as well, just to get them ready for transfers later. Okay, let's go on with that. So I'll just mix up a little bit of paint and we'll start tidying these guys up. Back to our number one rosemary brush. I don't know how well you can see, but you can see some of the shade washes dripped onto the lower lip here. Uh, likewise over the shoulders and such like in his face area where the helmet is slightly obscluding things a little bit there. So we're just going to tidy these areas up basically. I'll continue working around these guys and I'll come back to you when I'm finished. So I've got those yellow areas or cream areas tidied up now on both the troops and on the shields. Only the Republican shield really needs tidying up this way because the EIR shields, the decal will cover the whole area apart from the, the metal brim around the outside and we can tidy that up once it's on but the uh, Republican one, the decal only appears to be actual lightning bolts which we have to stick onto a red surface so I've got that tidy, ready for the red and then the decals later. The first thing I'm going to do with the troops is I'm going to pick out all the leather strapping and such like and the sandals in Gore Grunter Fur, which is a one of the GW's contrast paints. So we'll crack on with that. I'm going to scale my brush down now. I'm now using a 3O Rosemary and Co. Uh, sable brush to pick out these little straps and things a little bit easier. One of the tricks I've found with working with the contrast paint range is if you do the dark colours first, when you come to do lighter colours, if the lighter colours overspill the dark colours, you don't see them. So it's much easier to work that way. If you do it in reverse, obviously the dark colours will mark up the light colours. So have a thought to the order that you put your contrast paints on. Working dark to light works quite well. So I'll press on and I'll come back to you when these are all done. With all the leather strapping, scabbards and sandals done, I'm now going to move on to the red um, tunics of the legionaries. And for that we're going to stick with contrast paints and I'm going to use Blood Angels Red. work our way around the tunic.
And again, we'll come back when all that's done. With the red areas of the uniforms now done, I'm going to move on and do the pelums. Uh, for this, I found a bit of a mixture of colour to be my go-to. I ended up mixing two contrast paints together 50-50, um, Saigo Brown and Snakebite. I've made a little puddle here with it in, but it's basically a one-to-one -one mix. Uh, give it a shake up and we'll put that on the pelums. I'll just put a few drops of this on my little palette. I'm going to switch to the smaller brush just for this frontal area because there's a little bit more finickety detail around these um, metal studs that hold the actual metal point of the javelin in place. So we we'll just carefully work our way around those. And that's one of the peel I'm done. I'll do the other guy and I'll come back to you when I'm finished. And with the peeler done, we're narrowing down what we need to do to finish off these models. I think next I'll do the black plume on top of the Republican Legionary's head. So we'll do that with the Black Templar. Okay, one black plume done. Uh, next, we'll stick with it for now. Next, I think what we'll do is we'll pick out some of the little small details that remain, which will be the um, the handles on the swords and daggers that are on these models. I'm going to use a, a leathery color for that. I'm going to use snake bite leather. Just going to pick these out in a little bit of a leathery color. that one down. Okay, that's the, those little details done. Back of this chap, he's got some hair as well. So, where we can see some hair on the back of this legionary's head, you could do any of shades of brown or black, or um, maybe even blondy colours if you want, depending on where these guys have been raised from as, as legionaries. Um, I'll probably go with a dark brown, I think. So, let's go back to the side of brown, I think. That bit down. And the last thing to do is the flesh, which we will of course use contrast golem and flesh for. Alright, golem and flesh.
and I'll work around the rest of the model and I'll come back when he's done. So that's the paint job finished on the skin and that completes the painting on the core model itself. We've still got to do the shields and the transfers and put them on and the other thing that we we'll still need to do with these models because we've used a fair bit of contrast paint on here and contrast paint can rub off if it's handled a reasonable amount so it will be important to varnish these models so I, what I will be doing is once the paint's fully dry I will be giving them a coat of gloss varnish to start with which I feel is a better protector but I don't like the glossy finish so once the gloss is dried I then go over it with a matte varnish to finish off the actual varnishing process and bring them back to a, a proper matte finish as I like it. So I've left the paint for a day to properly dry before I use the varnish and we're going to start with a gloss varnish on these guys and in this case I'm using AK's glossy varnish. It's an acrylic water based varnish um, I'm just going to squirt a few drops into a little palette dish and apply it with an old clean brush. So just moisten the brush to get it going, uh, get some varnish on the brush and start applying it to the model. It's got a kind of a bluey white kind of look as it goes on, but it will dry perfectly clear and translucent. The only thing I do is, as I put it on, I kind of keep working it a little bit. I don't want it to pool anywhere too thickly, but I want everywhere covered, is the best way I can put it. So I get everything covered, and if it's, if it's um, sitting pooling anywhere, I just move it around with a brush or wick off any excess onto a tissue or something like that, or even another model if you're batch blending. You don't need to use your best brush for this, you're just getting it on. As long as the brush is clean so there's no paint fragments or anything residue in the brush that then comes on with the varnish and then spoils the paint job, just make sure your brush is clean. And this can also go through an airbrush, but again if this is a kind of a beginner's video, I don't expect you to be using airbrushes. There are also aerosol can varieties of varnish. And gloss is certainly an easy one to apply in that way. Um, when it comes to aerosol, matte varnishes can be a bit hit and miss with some brands. A good one was Testers, but you can't get that full of the money now. I don't know where the hell it's gone. It disappeared when COVID hit and we haven't had it back since. Uh, a good one in the meantime is uh, Vallejo's uh, spray matte varnish. just working your model in with a brush, the AK product is fine. And there's other products available too, uh, there's uh, Andy Shine from Mummy Paint is pretty good too, uh, Vallejo also do their um, matte varnish too, and again it, it's much like this, you brush it on and spread it around and wherever it's on too thick you just wick it off. So here you can see it's kind of pooling in this little area here, I'm just going to pull the excess out and put on a tissue, likewise under there. Basically we're trying to make sure everywhere is covered, but it's not going to thick pool anywhere. Okay. I think we'll pop him to one side and we'll do the other chap. And same again, just work it around. And I'll come back when this is done. While the gloss varnish was drying, I went back to the shields and spun them round on their little prop. And I've painted the back of each shield with a leather brown surface primer. That's now dry, and I'm going to give them a shade wash with Agrax Earthshade. see how easy that is, I'll crack on and get the rest of these shields done. The gloss varnish is now dried on our soldiers, so we're now going to add a matte varnish, just to add another layer of varnish and that will matte away that gloss. And again, I'm sticking with the AK brand and I've got their Ultra Matte 
Again, it's acrylic, water miscible. We just put a few drops in our little palette and we'll put that on again with a clean cold brush. Give it a shake uh, to distribute the matting agent, otherwise it won't work as well, so nice shake. A few drops in our palette, an old clean brush, and just as before, we're looking for a thin but even coat, and we don't want it to pool anywhere. This time, this one has a kind of a, a white with greyish tinge to it as you put it on. But again, don't be alarmed by the colour, it will dry completely clear and perfectly matte. And if you do find when it has dried that there's still a few little glossy patches showing through, just apply another small amount of varnish over those areas. don't need a huge amount, just a covering, and it will very quickly dry on and do the matting effect. Very swiftly. Sometimes people like to leave a certain glistening quality to the metal areas. I guess you could use a satin varnish perhaps for that if you just want to have a bit of a, bit of a tinge of shine to the armour, but I just generally stick to the matte. I quite like the way it looks. Okay, so we've got a reasonable layer on, we'll just wick off where it's a bit thick. Wherever it seems to have pooled, we'll just wick it away. Okay. I'll do the other chap. And I'll come back to you when he's done. And there we have the matte varnish dried and the models are now complete, apart from their shields. So now we're going to put the shields on and also put on the shield decals. So we'll work towards that in the next segment. Here's the two shields we'll be working with. The uh, square scutum for the Imperial Warrior and the rounded scutum for the Republican Warrior. The rounded one, I did paint that uh, with the Blood Angels red contrast paint, but it was a little bit patchy over a large flat area, so I ended up letting that dry and go over it with Mephiston red, just to give it a smooth surface, and that's gone pretty well for me, I think. And on the reverse, we did a leather brown primer, and then we went over that with our Grax Earth shade, just to give it some shade and interest. You're not going to see much of the back of the shield anyway, but if the eye just catch it, at least it's painted. So we're now going to attach these to the models. So we'll start with the square scutum of the Imperial Soldier. And we'll get him ready to go. Now this is obviously going to go on his forward shield hand. And going to go something like that. And there's a little notch in the back of the shield where it lines up with the hand. So we're gonna glue that into place, but because the areas are painted, the glue's gotta try and work its way past that paint before it can actually bond with the plastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my knife and I'm gonna scratch the paint off where that join will be. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit of paint on the back of his hand. So, and then we'll do the same with the shield. I'm just going to work my knife, oops, sorry. I'm going to work my knife in here just to get some of that paint off that little central recess. It's not looking too bad. We'll get our plastic glue again. on the back of the hand and we'll put a dollop in that shield recess and then we'll hold the two together and give it a few seconds to bomb. There we go. So that's on there. 
And again, I'm going to leave that a little while longer just so it sets and goes off fully. We'll do the same with the Republican Warrior. Let's just try that shield for fit. Where's it going to go? So that's going to go in there. Like so. So rather than sitting on the top of this guy's fist, it's like going to sit on his front fingers. So I'm going to straight the paint off here. that into here. Get some glue on both areas. And again, we'll hold that in place for a few seconds. Go. Shield. Oops, sorry. Our shield is on our soldier. So here's the decal sheet that comes with the Imperial soldier. I've obviously already used one there on a previous model build. If you look at these closely, hopefully you might be able to tell this, each decal is individual on the sheet. You can see there's like a slight film around each decal. So if I toss that in some warm water, they'd all eventually lift off individually, but that would make a mess, so I'm not going to do that. So the trick is to get a small, sharp pair of scissors, like so, and we're going to carefully cut round one of these decals. And I'm just going to cut it broadly just to get it off the main piece and I can trim it individually like that and then we'll just tidy that up like that So there's our decal ready to go. Don't worry about the edge there, because when we put it on the model and tidy it up, we'll conceal that as well. So that's ready to go. That central blue square is a gap in the decal. That just means there's nothing there. It'll lift off as that is. So that's the Imperial one done. Let's have a look at the Republican one. So the Republican one is a, two pairs of lightning bolts. Um, so that is one decal but if you look at it carefully you can hopefully see there's kind of like an oval shape around that pair of bolts and there's actually a gap through vertically between them so I believe that's two separate pieces which will come off but what I'm going to do is try and cut around that oval shape and then that will give us our item to go in our bath to get it moving so I'll go, I'm going to cut this off in a square to start with and then start tidying it up Again, I can just see between with the backing film where that roughly is. Oops, sorry, that's come off there. And now I'm going to try and carefully follow that curved line. This is a first for me. I haven't done these ones before, so fingers crossed this works out. If it doesn't, we'll soon learn. Okay, so we've got that roughly trimmed down. And that's our two decals ready to go. So I'm fairly confident that one's going to work. I'm not too sure about this one, but we'll see what happens. To put the decals on, we're going to make use of two products. One is Microset, and one is Microsol. The Microset, as you can see, it helps the actual initial adhesion of the decal to the area you're putting it on. The Microsol 
is a softening agent which will help the decal adhere to a curved surface and obviously these shields are curved so that's going to come in pretty well. So we use this one first and we paint that on the area the decal is going to go. We then apply the decal, get it smoothed down as well as we can and then apply some of the microsol over the top and that will then get the decal softened properly into place. But first of all we need to get our decals in some warm water to get them moving. So here I've pinched a small basin of warm water from the kitchen. I don't know what you call these, tureen or something like that, something my wife uses in cooking. Um, just know about it. As long as you've got something to put some warm water in, you can see what you're doing. I'm going to get our decals, if I can put them up. Pop them in there. Just give them a little dunk. So a little water. And the warm water will basically soften and remove the adhesive film or whatever it is between the decal itself and the backing card piece. I'm just going to move the these around a little bit. And if you just keep gently stroking them, you'll eventually see the decal start to move. There you go, you can see it's starting to move now. Up that blue backing. Okay, so let's just put that to one side slightly. And to make it easier to work on our soldier, again, I'm going to make use of the wonderful product that is Blue Tack. And I'm just going to tack in to the bench the shield facing me so I can work on it easily. I'm going to get a little pair of tweezers just to help me pick up that decal. And again, my brush. So I'm gonna just try and maneuver this decal off the backing a little bit so I can get hold of the backing paper at the top where it becomes exposed. It's kind of a little bit fiddly, but there, got it. And now that I've got hold of it, I can bring it down. I'm gonna line it up roughly over where I want it to go hold it with the brush at the bottom and just pull the backing paper out the way and there's our decal roughly in place. Now I can pick them up and start working with them a little bit. So we're trying to obviously get this decal now squared up into position. You want to flatten it down and try and move it into where it needs to go. Oh, bugger, I didn't use the solutions first. Ha <laughs> ha! videoing mistake. Let's just rewind the clock and take that off. Just get a <laughs> ha, 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 ha. I'll just get a bit of tissue and dampen that dry. Dampen it dry? Dry it off. Oh god. Words, Scott, words. Okay. And we'll just rewind the tape. <laughs> We'll use our micro set and with a clean brush. I'm just going to paint some of this on our shield. Okay. We'll have a microsol on, not a microsol, micro set. Micro set first, the blue one. I can tell this is Sunday morning, I'm not quite awake yet. Okay. We we'll carefully put our decal back in place. Okay. So we're just going to keep pressing this into place gently. What you're trying to do here is obviously force out any excess water and force out any air bubbles that might be caught underneath. And try and align it where we want it to go. You can obviously see the base of the decal is around the edges here. 
and it's sitting around the square recess in the scutum there. Now I'm going to get a bit of tissue paper, dry tissue paper, and I'm just going to press this down. Basically just gently, firmly, but gently press it down into place. Again, just trying to squeeze out all the water or anything that's behind that decal to get it as flat to the shield as possible. Like so. And with that on, pop them back on here for a moment. I'll now get our microsole. clean brush again and we'll just have a dunk in here and we're going to paint some of that microsol over the shield area and that will just further help that decal soften down into place like so and we'll put that back on his little post to dry Once that dries, we'll be able to then varnish it, which will fully seal it into place. Haha, <laughs> who spotted that? Okay, the keen eye of you might have noticed that I had put it on upside down because there's words in the middle here that says Legio Vic. So thankfully, I put my glasses on, my model glasses on, to have a quick look to see how it was, and so I put it on upside down. Thankfully, the uh, microset and microsol combination meant I could just get hold of the decal, carefully peel it off, spin it around, put it back on, a bit more microsol, and now it'll be good to go. Fingers crossed. Anyway, it's on and square and scraped up, and everything's all right. So we're going to have a go at the Republican soldier's shield here, and. This time, I'm going to remember to use the micro set first. So, just a good coating of that on the shield. Okay, so. I don't know if you can see that. This has been in the water so long now that it's it's come off the backing paper by itself, so you can see the lightning bolts are actually in two pairs. Now that I move it into place, so I'm just trying to keep the area wet so it'll move. Just gotta tease it gently until you get it. Just sort of keep pushing it and pushing it and nudging it and hopefully it will eventually lie into place. Something like that. Just going to try and move it gently down into place. Let's see if we can encourage it with a bit more water. Just a case of sort of nudging it around until it lies where you want it. I think that looks about right. Like that. So now that we've got it in place, I'm going to just gently try and push it flat and try and get as much air or water out of the decal as possible without displacing it again. And then we've got a piece of tissue and we'll just press it down flat. Like so. And now I'm going to put on top of that the layer of microsol. Help 
just soften that down into place. Like that. So I'm going to let that fully dry, and when it has done, we'll then seal it in place with varnish. Again, we'll give it a gloss varnish to start with, and then we'll matte that off. Going back to our Imperial Roman Legionary, and his decal has now dried into position. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to define the edge around the actual perimeter edge of the decal, but also around that central boss. And I'm going to use that with a little bit of Saigo Brown again. It's just a good dark colour and it goes on very thin because of its contrast uh, consistency to give us a nice edge. So I'm just going to pop him here on this little prop, give our Saigo Brown a shake and pop it down with some blue tack. This is our 2 brush from Rosemary & Co again. Put it around the central boss. the perimeter of the shield. like that just gives a little bit of definition to the shield edge and the decal edge so I'll let that dry and then we can varnish it to seal the decal into place so here the decals are on and we've got the Saigor brown lining done as well to define the edge of the uh, transfer we're going to then seal that all with gloss varnish as we did before with the main miniature. So again we're going for a thin even layer of the varnish and we'll wick off any excess as we need to. Same again on the Republican soldier, the gloss varnish first to seal the decal down. And again, wick off the excess. With the gloss varnish dry, we now repeat the process with the matte varnish as before. So with the varnish on the shields now completely dry, 
That is our soldiers completed. The next thing to do is to base them. And the next thing to do, therefore, on these models is simply to paint the bases that you can see there on the plastic models dark brown, which I use GW's Rhinox Hide for, but you can use any dark brown you like. So we'll get that done now. Oh, there you go. Another one completed. So as I said, next is basing. Now this is the first Republican Legionary I've done. I haven't got any of this done yet, so I'm going to leave them to one side for now. But our Imperial Roman Legionary, I've got a bunch of these that are now ready for basing, so I'll do that in our next little video clip. So once we have all our Legionaries painted and based, or at least the base painted like this, it's time to get the unit ready for basing properly. And what we need to do is base them, and in this case, what I've chosen to do is to use Warlord Games' own basing sprue. These typically come with your units when you buy them. There are square bases to put troops on the 4x4 formation, sorry, 2x2 two two or 4 in a base and likewise smaller sizes to put single troops or other form, um, groupings on as you choose to do so. So here's what I've done as an example below for my 24 strong heavy Roman infantry unit. So essentially I've got them in fours or in twos so the unit is in three ranks of eight models. These three models here are the command models and there are metal components from a blister pack separately purchased from the unit. I haven't quite finished them, hence they're showing white still, but the rest of the unit is done and ready for basing, so I thought I'd crack on in that basis. So what I've done is haven't got all the model models ready, I've laid them out into what seems to me a most useful formation. The reason I do this way is it allows the unit to form into a column should it need to with the command elements at the fore, and then the rest of the unit can line up behind them in the square blocks. And what I tend to do is put the troops armed with swords at the front and those with spears and throwing pilums at the back. It just looks sensible to me. Obviously the troops in the front ranks will be fighting closely with the enemy so I'll have swords drawn, those at the back will be throwing spears over the top. So that's how I pre-arrange my troops. I then glue them to the bases just using our regular plastic glue as before and then once they're glued down properly we then add basing texture. This is an acrylic mud product by MIG but there are various basing pastes and such like from Vallejo as well you can use. They're basically a tub of material and you apply that with a spatula or other similar tool to the base to get an even surface. So I'll get these models glued to their bases and I'll start applying some of this to see how it goes. So here I've got them glued onto their bases and before gluing them finally into position I do try and make sure that the models are not going to be sticking out anywhere so that they occlude or bash into an adjacent stand so the unit can group together sensibly. And it still works if we need to reposition them to say the marching march column or something along those lines. I've left the command elements out still, as said, they're still busy being painted to finish. But these guys are now good to go. So with them glued to their base, we can now start applying the basing putty. And this basing material we apply, as I said, with a simple spatula tool, something along the lines of this kind of thing. It's, it's a sculpting tool or whatever you want to call it, uh, but it's just perfect for getting a dollop of the basing material and smearing it into place under the base. And it, what it'll do is it'll give us a nice even layer, joining up all the models together into a uniform level on the base with a, a muddy background material. Perfect for our troops here. 
So I'll start doing that and you can see how it goes on. So to apply our basing media to the base, I'm going to use an array of tools. I've got metal spatulas, a long metal pin, a simple cocktail stick, and an old worn out brush. All of these are going to be used basically to push the basing material into where we need to get it to go. So I'll just start off and I'll grab a little piece with the spatula tip. base and obviously I'm trying not to get it onto the actual model itself but I do want to cover the base area and get it all level and evened out and it's just a case of adding a bit more at a time to the base spreading it out filling the gaps between the bases until we are all covered and as said we'll need a range of different material different tools just to push this material into the gaps without getting the material onto the painted models. It's a little bit fiddly and it's worth taking your time over to get it right. So here I've got a reasonably large dollop, if you can see it sitting there, and I can push that down into that crevice with a long pin and work it into the areas that the wider tool can't quite reach. And scrape some up over the base as well to get a blended finish to the whole feature. So I'm going to work this into the model now. It's going to take a while, you've got to have a bit of patience with it, but the end result is definitely worth it. So I'll come back to you once I've got this base finished. And that's the basing paste done on the base of the model, all done. We can put that aside now to dry. Probably best left overnight for it to fully dry, but it'll be rock hard by then. So I'm going to press on and uh, get the rest of the unit done like this. With the basing material now dried, I'm going to tidy up the edge just by painting it a dark brown. In this case, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. Good as that. So once that dry, we're then going to glue some basing material, some grass effects and things on top of the base to finish it off. We'll do that next. With that base edge now dry, I'm now going to put some flock material on the base just to add some grassy effects. This is my little mix of flock materials. I use a, diff a various blend of um, static grass and sponge flocks to give me a, a varied type. Um, this consists of things like Static Grass Flock by Woodland Scenics and also Sponge Flock materials from Scenic Textures mixed together to get an interesting blend. You can also buy ready-made blends from um, Geek Gaming Scenics and we have those in a range of different varieties and styles. To add that to the base I've got a little dish here and I've pre-mixed this. This is just PVA glue mixed with about 50% water and it gives a slurry that will apply easily and will easily aid the flock material bonding to the base. I'm just going to apply this with an old brush in a kind of patchy orientation so it will leave some bits of the soil showing through. Sorry, it's got an old hair there. Obviously try not to get it on the models themselves or on the feet or whatever. And once we've got a reasonable covering on the base like that, as I said, don't need to cover the entire base. I'm going to get our sponge block material and sprinkle it onto the base from above, making sure 
all the areas are covered. Put it on thickly. I know that looks ridiculously too much, but now what we're going to do is just get a little plastic rod. You could use a paintbrush handle or anything really, and we're just going to push this down into the glue so it definitely adheres in there. off and we'll just pop that on the lid for my little container so any excess will just fall off on the lid and I can work through the rest of the unit so I'll come back when that's all done just a cautionary note this fibrous material it's a very fine fibrous material have a care not to get it in your eyes watch if you've got any bits on your fingertips and things like that don't rub your face or anything after you've been touching it otherwise you might have a uncomfortable situation small uh, safety tip there okay I'll get the rest of these guys done once the basing glue has dried we can blow off and brush off the excess to leave the base complete we can further embellish this with grass tufts and other scenic items but for the now I'm quite happy to leave that as it is and we can add that to our to the rest of our unit pop him into place on his movement tray and we have our Roman unit complete and ready for action. I hope you found this video instructive and helpful in getting your historical units painted and on the table. I know painting large armies of many models can seem daunting at first, but with these techniques you can get your models painted and quickly on the table. Here's a few pictures of my first Roman division of four units with some artillery support. Please like, share, subscribe, you know the drill guys, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.